Here's how I had the AI called GPT-3 make a game in just 30 minutes. And just as a fun gimmick, the thumbnail which you clicked on is also AI generated. Artificial intelligence, also known as AI, is an ever-growing topic. And with the recent public release of the GPT-3 chatbot, it is a hot topic as well. So I decided to see if GPT-3 could make me a game without having to intervene too much. For this, I set up some rules for myself which was GPT-3 writes all the code, it should debug its own code, I need to follow GPT-3 on how I set it up, and I'll do my best to not lead GPT-3 in any direction. This basically means that I shouldn't act as my own. I am just a support between GPT-3 and Unity, which is my engine of choice. Before we get into it, have any YouTuber in history ever told you about the subscribe button? Oh, they, they have? Okay, I, I won't do it then. First, I asked GPT-3 to give me five mini video game ideas. All of them were really interesting as small games, but I chose to go with game one, which was already named Escape the Island. And it states, in this survival game, you are stranded on a deserted island and must gather resources, build shelter and find a way to escape before a tropical storm hits. The next thing I did from here was to ask it to give me steps to make game one. It gave me some generic game making steps, which I then chose to follow. Step one was to determine the setting and the plot of the game. And since GBT3 already did this, I could simply skip to step two, which was design the gameplay mechanics. It even listed out some of the mechanics needed, such as gather resources, build shelter, and find a way off the island. I then asked it to provide me a script for the top-down character movement, and it delivered. However, this was also where it became apparent to me that I'll probably need to add some of my own experience to my questioning. It did provide a functioning top-down movement script, the issue is just that it did it by modifying the transform position directly, which means there's no collision or any other interactions of any kind. But I chose to stick with it and move on, and here's how that turned out. I afterwards asked it to provide me a script for a top-down camera that smoothly follows the player, and it actually did really well on this one. I can't complain, it just works. I then continued down the original path and asked it what scripts I would need to be able to gather resources. It nicely listed out all of the different scripts I would need and I simply started from the top. First one was a script to manage the resource inventory. It made a nice dictionary setup for this with some easy to call methods which I quite like. However, it made a flaw at this point. And can you spot it? Well, let's try and move on and we'll figure out what it is. I then asked it where I attached the script in the hopes that it would catch on, but it didn't. When I followed its instructions, I obviously encountered the issue. The script wasn't monobehavior. For those of you that don't know, monobehavior is Unity's object-oriented setup for scripts, meaning that if the script will have an instance in the world, it needs to be monobehavior. But when trying to attach a non-monobehavior script to an object in Unity, it gives you an error. I then simply pasted this into GPT-3 and asked it to fix it, and it did. It even explained to me that mono behavior was the issue. Continuing from here, I asked it how I would make a script for my resources. I didn't even specify that it had to match up with the existing resource script, but it already assumed this and gave me the code for the resources. This is super cool. At this point, I encountered another error. GPT-3 is telling me that you haven't liked the video and commented yet. But for real though, I did encounter an error. Because it never told me to make the resource colliders into triggers, even though it uses the onTriggerEnter method. So I wanted to see if it could debug this by itself, and it could. I simply asked it, and step 4 in the 5 steps that it came up with was in fact the fact that it needed to be a trigger collider. So, so far so good. I then asked it how I could visually display the amount of resources the player has. This is where things got really interesting, because it came up with ideas I hadn't even thought about myself. Of course it gave me the usual with UI, but option 3 was particularly interesting because it was using particle effects. This was interesting to me because I've not myself seen something like that. Of course I had to move on with option 3. It gave me a neat step-by-step -step guide on how we implement this, so I just made some basic, really ugly particle effect, switched out the resource inventory script for the new one that it made for me, and boom, it just works. After this was done, I asked it to provide me a script for the survival elements, and it just did. A clean and easy implementation of hunger, health, and thirst. A really interesting part to this was that it actually added the fact that if you have no food or no thirst, you will be damaged or otherwise you will be healed. I think that was pretty neat that I didn't even have to ask for this, it just knew that it was part of a survival element. 
Afterwards, I asked it to provide me the ability to eat and drink, and it quite simply did as well. It firstly made new methods and told me to add them to the existing script, and then it provided a script for me to add to the food, and I could just do the same for the drinking. At this point, something rather interesting happened. I decided to ask it what we were now missing from the scope of the game. Uh, I did this to see if it could take the entire chat into account. It told me that it needs to know which game I was talking about, which was very odd since it seemingly had no issue referring to it throughout the chat. I told it the original name of the game and it returned to it with no issue, going over the things that we have and the things that we need. I decided to cut it a bit shorter here since there were a bunch of stuff it still wanted me to do, so I decided to stick with building and escaping the islands since these were the main parts of the original scope. I asked it to provide me a script for the player to build structures and it did pretty well on this. It did however do a very strange setup. It had a start building method and a stop building method and it probably just needed a single building method. Another thing which I found very strange is the fact that it hard-coded the needed amount of materials. It had so far been doing really well with setting up parameters, but apparently this time it decided on hard-coding 10 wood and 5 stone into it. But no matter, we pushed onwards. Now, so far it made the methods needed to build, but it actually never gave the player a way to build. So I asked it for this, and it just works like a charm. So here you can see me place down a building and also not colliding with it, so let's go back and fix that. So I asked it to help me add collision to the existing top-down player script that it made, and this was a mistake most likely on my part. It attempted to make the existing movement script into a rigid body movement script. For you that might not know, a rigid body is Unity's standard physics simulation setup, so just like in real life, you can add forces to any body of mass and so on. And Mashing these two concepts together didn't really go well. It tried implementing its own collision detection, which is simply not needed with the rigid body, and it ended up looking like this. What, 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 the, what the hell is even going on? I'm, I'm barely moving. I then asked it to make a top-down movement script using the character controller component, and this time it worked much better. And now because of the character controller component, the collisions were already handled. Now all that was needed was escaping the island. So I asked it to provide me a script to escape the island. The setup here was a little odd to say the least, but from looking at the code it seemed like the escape boat would spawn once you reach a trigger. I'm not sure why and it didn't code any way to actually interact with the boat, but this also marks the point at why I decided to stop. From this I feel like I can pretty easily conclude how I think the current state of AI will impact on game development, and perhaps way more areas. So first of all, this is a chatbot. There's already AI that can do art, there are some that are already looking into 3D models, so let's look away from my horrible filler art and take a look at what just happened here with the code. From just me communicating with the chatbot and acting as a medium between the AI and Unity, we actually have some functioning game mechanics here that could be turned into an actual game. Now, would I use this to create a full game? No, I absolutely wouldn't. But would I use it to support me in game creation, idea generation and debugging? Absolutely. Could you make a game with no knowledge whatsoever? No, not in its current state. Maybe for the future, but I did still have to ask fairly specific questions in order to get what I needed. I tried my best not to lead it in a direction, but sometimes I just had to. Its way of explaining things as if I've just found a tutorial on my specific issue is incredible. I think we all know the feeling of being stuck and Google just not helping us out. The fact that GPT-3 actually understands my human language and response to me and my needs is incredible. AI still has far to go before it could be considered sentient, but the fact that we already have intelligence machines that can observe, understand and learn is just amazing. And I can't wait to see what GPT-3 or other machines might bring to game development and the rest of the world in just a few updates down the line. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and comment for the YouTube algorithm, and as always, I hope that you have a wonderful day.